Welcome back to all the work, my restoration of my 1987 Ski Supreme. These are some lost days of footage, actually. Uh, I am recording this and putting it out months after I put out the final engine replacement video. I don't know what happened, but here we are, going for it now. I am cleaning up the engine mounts here. These were extremely rusty and there was flaky metal coming off of them all over the place and I want to paint them with some Rust-Oleum to keep them from rusting in the future. And first I need to just clean them up, a little bucket of water, a little wire brush and spend some time cleaning these guys. On this day, I am painting the engine mounts. I have Rust-Oleum spray paint that I'm going to use. And I'm, when I, while I was taping off the engine mounts, I realized that I needed to do a little bit more cutting. There was a little lip of fiberglass and gel coat kind of coming up onto this engine mount where I'm cutting now. Uh, and I needed to address that before I would be able to do a really good job of painting the engine mounts. So, one step backwards, as usual, to go one step forwards. A little sanding, a little cleaning up, but it's going to come out better in the end. Now I am able to tape off the engine mounts. Uh, knowing what I know about painting, it is all about the prep work, and I am trying to really do a good job of taping this off so I can spray paint kind of willy-nilly without worrying about it however I ran out of this plastic sheeting and had to do a bit of a janky job with it and got a little bit of bleed over but it's all okay because it's all gonna get repainted anyway and I'm not even finished with the boat so no big deal first coat of spray paint was the black rust-oleum. I figured the black can would have the best rust preventing properties. The directions on the can say to paint over the last layer within an hour or after 24 hours. Now as usual I'm up against a time crunch here so I waited just about 18 hours to paint the white on and then I put the blue on right away and I thought I was gonna get a speckle look by painting some white into the blue, but I'm not much of an artist. It didn't work out great. So then I undertook putting three more coats on over the blue uh, to get it to this nice, good looking blue. It's not a perfect match to the outside of the boat, which is a bit of a bummer, but it'll be under the engine cover. No big deal. So I just ripped up all the masking supplies and now I need to undertake finishing fiberglassing and gel coating the driver's side of the boat so I need to tape off my freshly painted engine mounts so that when I'm doing that work I don't ruin the paint job that I just put down. Why did I do this in this order? Because I was desperate. While I was masking the engine mounts, I noticed a couple more air bubbles in the fiberglass I had done previously that I needed to address before I gel coat it over. It's annoying to be going back and doing this, but it has to be done.
Now it's time for some final sanding before I'm ready to start gel coat. Now on to a hopefully final round of cleaning with the boat surface prep. It is quite odd going back over this a month or longer and watching the work going into this and really reaffirming why I'm doing the video like this because what I would have told you offhand, oh yeah, this section took me a half a day is really reminding me that no this was an extremely long process this was like three days of a good hard push to get all this done there's just so much more work and so many more hours in this project that I can never imagine even after having done the project this is the same day I have moved the boat outside so that I can do fiberglass and without stinking up the house with the chemical smell and here we go I needed to mix up one final batch of peanut butter so I could fill in the holes where I did the dremeling earlier in the day and I had a couple more of those uh, circular discs that I needed to peanut butter in up under the steering wheel. So I gotta get that done, uh, but once that was done, it was on to the fiberglassing, the fun part. It is wild that this was the first day of November. I really got lucky with the weather on this project. Had we not had a really nice warm fall, I don't know if I could have pulled it off and I have no idea where this boat would be sitting right now. But early November and with my little greenhouse situation and I am fiberglassing and making it happen. Murphy stopped in to check it out.
definitely missed the shot here, uh, but I am fiberglassing around the stuffing box where the axle goes out to the bottom of the bow, and I also do around the prop. Day 69 and it is just miraculously hot out and I am going to be able to go and do the gel coating with no greenhouse. It is amazing how beautiful that looks when that turns all white. Now that the gel coat is painted, I can shave off some of the loose tabs of fiberglass that I have there. I am blown away at how much easier it is to work with a gel coated fiberglass than just a laminated fiberglass sitting there. The gel coat, the wax just seems to not clog up the sandpaper and allow the cutter to go through it. It almost like softens it. I really wish I had appreciated the necessity of gel coat before when I was doing all that sanding and clogging up sandpaper. It just makes everything so much better and so much easier. Um, well, now I know. Now that is a completed interior. Well, not quite. There's still the LEDs, the fairing, the sea deck, the shower, the heater, the add battery, the extra cleats, the fishing rod holders, the cup holders, the water ski rack, the storage net, the spider cracks, the upholstery, the new electrical panel, the push button ignition, maybe. Uh, reinstall the gas tank, spray paint the throttle, install the throttle, steering cable, swim platform, carpet under the nose, and paint.